things I edit out of this thing because I get a little bit crazy. Hello and welcome to the Fairy Little Knitting Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little, and this is my podcast all about knitting. Welcome back to everybody who has been here before and welcome to any new viewers and subscribers. I want to say hello. In today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about some more finished objects, works in progress, and things that are coming in the future, as well as some jibber jabber at the end, so very excited. I am also going to be talking about a new knit along that I'm co-planning with two other podcasters, which I'm very excited about. We are all very excited about. Let's get right into the knitting, shall we? So I have been working on Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox. I have been knitting three of them, as you can see. They're back here, aren't they so cute? I'm like sitting right in front of one of them. There, <laughs> if my head could stay there, that's kind of perfect. So these are the Mr. Fitzwilliams Foxes that I have been working on. Since you last saw them, I've put buttons on, pockets on, uh, finished one of the sweaters, and knit three pairs of socks which is super rad. They're so, so cute. So the next step for me is knitting the scarves. So I'm just going to take down, I'll take down this one and this one, this little Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox. This is the one that I still have to fix his head. Still have to fix it. It will be fixed. Next time you see him, his head will be on straight. <laughs> But he's got his little buttons, which are super cute, and little socks. So I'm very excited. This Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox is named Victoria, and Victoria is a girl Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox. I'm not sure what the other, the other names are. I think the girls have gone back and forth on their names. But these are the last socks that I knit, these nice white ones. And I have to say that the black socks were the most difficult to do just because they're so dark and picking up stitches was a bit of a pain in the posterior to pick those up but I did it I had to rip it out and re-pick them up a few times just because it was difficult to see but this is them they are one step closer every day they get a little bit more done on them They've definitely taken longer than I thought they would, but so worth it. Every day they get another detail added and they are so cute. This pattern is by Kay Jones, who is Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, Bears podcast. It is such a cute pattern. I would say I'm, I think, three weeks in. So I would say comfortably at least a week for each of these to be complete um, and I'm still working on the scarf so I just cast on the scarves for this little one right here I'm using so that's how long the scarf is so far it needs to be 17 inches and then there's a, a frill at the at each of the ends like tassels that's the word I'm looking for, tassels. So there's tassels at the ends of each. I am using my, I'm using opal yarn and it's the same yarn I used for his little socks and his little sweater. And I'm also using Drops Fable Alpaca and it's black. So these two are going to go together. As well as this is This one is going to have, a, the scarf is going to be this blue and black mixed. And then Victoria is going to have the purple and black mixed. So it's going to be a modeled, their scarves are going to be modeled. And I think that mottled. So I think that's going to look really good. So I'm really excited about these. And they are <clears throat> super cute. They're already very well loved. And definitely an enjoyable knit. If you would like to knit some toys, these are the toys to knit. I'm hoping to have all of the scarves for the Mr. Fitzwilliam Foxes finished this week. I'm hoping actually to have them finished tonight or tomorrow. And then I'm going to be going 
back to one of my old works in progress. This work in progress has been on the needles for, I want to say two years, but it could be three. If you've watched the podcast for a while, you will recognize it because it was on, it was featured on the podcast quite a few times. It is in this beautiful polka dot bag that I think I got from Walmart when I first started um, really getting into crocheting. But it's a knitting bag, so it's extra thick, so your knitting needles don't fall out of it. But I don't think it's something that they sell anymore. So this pattern is the Blackberry Cardigan, and it is by Alexandra Charlotte Defoe, and it was cast on May 15th, 2016, so almost three years. In May, it'll be three years, so yeah. So over two and a half years ago, I cast this on. I cast on the bust size 38. The sizes go from 30 to 46 inches, so it's not a super broad spectrum of, of sizes. It does miss out on quite quite a segment of the population on the higher end of sizing and on the lower end of sizing as well. Um, and I know that's been a discussion in the knitting community recently is, is sizing and inclusiveness in sizing. So um, yeah, so I just want to let you know that that's that that's something that that's not as inclusive. It is very, very cabled though. So I will show you, I only have the black and white picture here, but maybe I'll see if I can go and do a screen grab of this card again. And I was concerned because I thought, because I had started knitting it so long ago that I was knitting a size too small and it still could be too small for me right now. But I guess I'll find out when it's done, if, it, if it's going to fit or not. So currently I have, the back is completely knit. So that's, it's got these really cool cables down the back. So beautiful. And this yarn is from McCausland Woolen Mill. It is very sheepy and it's very lanolin-y. So right now you can see through it a little bit, like you can see the wall behind it. When I block it, this yarn is going to bloom so much, you won't be able to see that after, you shouldn't be able to see that after. So that's going to just fill in really nicely. And it's very, very beautiful. And I, I remember that when I got into it, I just, I had to pay attention to it and there's sections where most of it is do this and at the same time do this and while you're doing this you have to do this. So it's do this panel and this panel and decrease or increase this however many rows. So I know that that was something that I really had to pay attention to. So the back was finished before I put it down. And then the front is done in two panels. So this is one of the panels and it goes up in the front. So it's going to go like this up in the front, which I think is a really beautiful detail. And then what happens is you, you do the front panel and then you pick up stitches around the collar and the front band, and then that creates the button band where you're going to do it up. So it actually fits when you wear it, it fits a little bit. So this would be actually lower, but you can see where it comes across to, it still has about that much to be able to close. So I'm going to be picking up stitches to do the button band afterwards. So this is really, really pretty. These cables are just so much fun. And I have notes in a book because I find when a pattern says do this and that, it gets a little bit confusing for me, <laughs> to say the least. So I have written up what I need to be doing 
when this measures 12 inches, then I needed to do start doing the neckline decreases because it also comes in at the neckline. So I did write down what I need to be doing. I'm going to have to take take a re-look at this because it's it definitely, it's got pluses and plus or minus. So it means I'm adding on one side and I'm subtracting on the other. I need to figure out which side that means that I'm adding and subtracting on. Um, and then down here is the rows that I still have not written out. None of these rows have been complete. When I complete a row, I make a check mark on that row. But also when I'm working on that row, I do a little, I do the first part of the check mark. So I know that that's the row that I'm on. And then I complete the check mark when that row is complete. It takes extra time and it's, that eats in on my knitting time for sure. But it's a way that I can make sure that I'm definitely on track for where I should be and that I'm increasing increasing and decreasing exactly where I need to be. So this is going to be getting worked on as soon as I'm done those scarves. And this project, obviously three years in the making, I wanna get it off the needles. It is a work in pro progress that has been looking at me in the face for almost that entire time. I've been like, oh, I need to just get that done. But I know that when it's uh, do this and I just need to get in there and get it finished. <clears throat> which that knits nicely dovetails into the cowl that I'm going to be co-hosting. It is coming up February 1st to March 31st, and I'm just going to announce it gently here. Of it. We're still ironing out some of the details, but I wanted to bring it up right away. So if you're interested in joining, then you can pick your pattern and your yarn, or if you have a work in progress that you want to finish, then this is the perfect opportunity to do it. It is a cable knit along, and I'm co-hosting it with Grace from Babbles Traveling Yarn and Akira from the Knitting Annihilator podcast. So I just recently heard about Akira and I've started following her and, and watching her podcast. And her energy is so wonderful. She is she is very, very lovable. I'm so excited to be co-hosting this knit along with both of them. So part of what's going to need to happen is you will have to subscribe to each of our channels and you will have to follow us on Instagram. We are all going to have uh, chatter threads and finished object threads, but also we are going to be pulling prizes through our Instagram hashtag. We haven't worked out the hashtag yet. We're still ironing out those details. Okay, works so. in progress are acceptable, absolutely, and so is double dipping. You can dip all the dips you wanna dip. So. Yes, very excited about this. I'm going to link them both below. So if you wanna go over to each of their channels and subscribe now, then you can be abreast of any announcements through their channels. So very exciting and you'll, you'll hear more. I also wanted to mention, I have been gifted a couple different patterns recently. I, I was given a pattern from Melinda, who is the host of the Yarnder Woman podcast. And she sent me a little chicken pattern. And I'm super excited about this. It's a toy pattern. It's a chicken. And one of my girls is 
fully in love with chickens and I'm very excited to knit this for her because she's going to love it. So that's something else that will be coming up. I don't know when because I'm still trying to get my works in progress off the needles, but definitely that's going to get knit. I was also given a sweater pattern, a sweater pattern from Nancy, and I'll just post that picture up here. And it is so cute. I love the big sweater, the big sleeves. And it reminds me of a sweater that my mom knit when I was young for me. It, and it had the big bulky sweet sleeves, but the short body. And it was very cute and very comfortable. And that's something I definitely want to cast on as well. I think it would look really good with, um, I have this, this full skirt that's black and it has, a, um, it has like the bib in the front and I think that that sweater would look super cute with that skirt in particular. So I'm excited about that too. I was also, in the last episode, I talked about uh, helical sock knitting. I also received another pattern from Zoe and she and I have been messaging back and forth on Ravelry and she sent me because I was talking about the helical knitting, a pattern designed by her and it's called Oddments. And it is socks that are knit with helical knitting in different colors and using scrap yarn, which is super fantastic. And it's something I definitely want to try my hand at. So stay tuned to this space to find out how that goes. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for the patterns that you sent me. And I'm very excited about casting some of those on as soon as I have some knitting space. <laughs> so that's it for the knitting content for today. And I'm going to go into some jibber jabber now. So if you were just here for the knitting, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time. And I hope you have an amazing week. And those of you who are ready to get into some jibber jabber, then let's continue. So I'm going to talk about in jibber jabber today, something that's happening locally for us. I recently took you guys on a little mini tour of my local yarn store and recently, last week, I found out that our yarn store is actually closing. So they're having a really big sale, a big closeout sale. She's going out of business. I don't know if anybody else is going to be buying it and taking it over or if it, if this is this is it for the yarn store. I have not gone in there to find out what is going on yet. I'm planning on going in and, and saying hello and, and seeing the owner and um, taking a, a peek around. Um, I find it very difficult. I try to, I, I have tried to support our local yarn store as much as possible through the years that it has been, through the years that it has been open. But in the last couple years, or in the last year, in the last year, I have gone to a lot of festivals and supported more indie dyers directly, as well as I'm really trying to knit down my stash. So I'm, I know that it wasn't just because I wasn't shopping there as much that, that this is happening. And I don't know if it's, if it's what the reasoning is. And I don't know if it's, if it's health or if it's business related or not. But I, I definitely hate seeing the local yarn store close. We've had a few yarn stores in town, clo like open and close. And I just want to make sure that, um, like I just want to, want to do my part and support as much as possible the local yarn stores. And whenever I go out of town on a road trip, when I go to Sorrento or, or wherever, I try to stop in at all of the local yarn stores on the way to show them solidarity and to, to help support them. And, uh, I'm, I'm saddened that, that this yarn store is closing it. It's, they have a, they've always had a really great selection of the yarns that I like and the owner and I share a color palette. So there was, oh, I could always count on her to have the colors that I like <laughs> in there. And it's disappointing that she's closing and I just wish Sandy all the luck in the world in the future. And, and I just, hope that um, for you guys, if you get an opportunity to support a local yarn store, that you do that because I would hate to see more yarn stores closing 
again, I don't know if what what the reasoning behind it is. I don't I don't know if it was a sustainability or if if, if it was something else. I have no idea. So, um, but I'm hoping that somebody picks up where this yarn store left off and opens another yarn store in town so we can still have a local space to go and knit and to purchase beautiful yarns and have access to some yarns that might not be easy to have access to otherwise, as well as not having to worry about paying for shipping because the yarn stores pay for that. And so that's an added cost. So I just... um. That's my public service announcement. If you are local, then go and take a gander at the Naughty Knitter and see what kind of yarns she has. She has tons of stuff. It's all on sale now. So go and take a peek. I'm planning on going there in the next couple days to see what, what she has. Uh, probably buy a skein or two. I, I Yeah, <laughs> probably buy a skein or two and then add them to my supply of yarn. But I definitely am trying to downsize, but maybe maybe that falls outside of the knitting from stash realm, <laughs> bubble, I don't know. So yeah, so that's, that's happening. I um, feel like I need to touch briefly on something that's going on over, it's in the fiber community and it, it's kind of hitting Instagram super hard right now and that is a discussion on inclusivity and race and I know that a lot of people are raw right now because they are hearing seeing and learning a lot of new new things and I just want to say that when you know better you do better so learning is very important in this in this moment and paying attention is very important in this moment and being supportive of each other is the most important thing in this moment supporting each other and loving each other and doing so without judgment is very important in this moment this is a moment that we is a very profound moment and people are feeling a lot of things right now and change does not come easy and you have the right to feel how you feel and we're all learning so we are all in this together Every single knitter, we are a community. We are going to know better. We are going to do better. We are going to learn together. And we are going to embrace each other in this amazing community of supportive, wonderful people. And I just want to say that I'm there with you. We're walking this walk together. All of us united in our differences. I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week, an amazing month. That is it for me for today. And I hope you get tons of opportunity to knit. Until next time. <laughs>